Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and about a week or so ago, I made a video talking about whether or not we should prep for the upcoming election. Uh, this is 2020, it's already been a crazy year, and with the country is polarized and there, you know, the, the civil unrest is happening right now, I just figured that would be a topic that people would want to talk about, and I was right. Well, one of the things that I mentioned in that video was that amongst your other supplies for survival and uh, security, you should also have medical on you. And it turns out that that kind of sparked a lot of interest because I got a lot of emails on that one. People asking me what type of medical they should have and saying that that was one of the holes that they needed to fill and so they were online searching for cat tourniquets and things like that you know different things that they could add to their medical supplies so that kind of led me to think well if people are hopping online to buy tourniquets what kind of tourniquets are they going to run into if they're not actually buying a North American Rescue actual cat tourniquet? So I went on eBay, I went on Amazon, and I searched all the different tourniquets, kind of looking for a fake cat tourniquet that I could compare to a real cat tourniquet. And I found another tourniquet that seemed like it wasn't necessarily a knockoff cat tourniquet. It was something that was trying to be different and maybe even a little bit better than the original cat tourniquet, but it's still like half the price. I trust my life to an actual North American Rescue cat tourniquet. Uh, I get them off of my medic. Uh, I will put that down below a link. If you guys want to make sure that you're getting the real cat tourniquet, you can check the link below and that will take you over there and you can pick one up. Uh, but I ended up buying the one that I got off of Amazon and it's from Recon Medical. Okay, so here's a closer look at our two different tourniquets. We have the North American Rescue cat tourniquet. This is a Gen 7. This is an actual cat tourniquet right here. And this is the tourniquet that we bought off of Amazon. This is the uh, Recon Medical cat style tourniquet. Okay, now if you're looking at these two tourniquets, and you have no idea how to use these, uh, they're not going to be helpful to you in an emergency situation. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is get some type of medical training, and it's not that difficult to be honest with you. You can even take a class if you can find one in your area from the Red Cross, and sometimes they do a Stop the Bleed class, and they'll show you how to use a tourniquet, when to use a tourniquet because you don't always need to use a tourniquet. You know, if you see blood, it doesn't mean immediately apply a, a tourniquet. If you can stop the bleeding by applying direct pressure to the wound, then that is enough. That's all you need to do. If the bleeding has stopped by applying direct pressure, you don't need a tourniquet. I've seen some videos of uh, police interactions with suspects. The suspect has a little bit of blood and they immediately start applying a tourniquet when a tourniquet isn't necessary. Uh, if direct pressure isn't going to stop the bleeding, and you can tell there's already a pool of blood, I mean a lot of blood that makes you say holy crap, uh, that's when you want to apply a tourniquet at that point. So getting training is very important so you understand how these work and what they are good for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the different features between the two and whether or not this is even a viable option because I have to consider these types of things for those people that are out there that are on such a tight budget that they literally can't afford anything else. There are people out there, and you always have to understand, that especially you know in a time like this where a lot of people are out of work, where 15 or 30 bucks is a, a tank of gas and that's all they got. That's it. And so you have to consider, uh, is this good enough for those people that just can't afford the extra $15 for the actual thing? So uh, again, let's go ahead and talk about the different features of each one. Now I should mention if you're looking for a tourniquet and you just can't afford that $30 price point and you also don't want to downgrade to something like this, there are other tourniquets like the Rats Tourniquet, which all of these are going to be linked down below for your reference. But uh, there are things like Rats Tourniquets that cost significantly less and you'll be able to find those. You just need to learn how to use them because they are completely different and there's some things to consider when applying a Rats Tourniquet or other type of tourniquet as well. So there are other tourniquets available. Today we're just talking about these cat style tourniquets. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the the differences here. Now, the North American Rescue one, which uh, I believe has been used by the military since uh, 2005, uh, that one right there has a lot of time and experience behind it. So that's one of the things that I trust the most is the fact that it's been used, it's been used in combat, it's been used in situations where people have had to use these in life-saving emergencies and I can you know, go and I can actually search the times that people have used these and also get reviews from people that have been in the military. Maybe they were a medic in the military and they use these several times and they could tell me how good they work or they didn't work. 
And that to me is a very important resource when I'm buying something. How well does it work in the field? I don't really have too much of that with this one right here. And that's kind of, of a, a downside. Now there are some things about this that I like, um, definitely. So if you take a look at the top of the tourniquet right here, so this is the windlass, this is called the windlass. And what this does is it's attached to a strap, as you can see right here. And there's a free floating strap that is uh, attached to the rest of the band. And as you twist it, it basically brings the band together together in order to create that compression that eventually is going to cut off blood flow. So they both pretty much work the same. It's really just kind of construction and a couple other features that set them apart. Now this one right here, the windlass is going to be made out of uh, aluminum. I believe it's aluminum. It's a metal. Okay. So this one's made out of metal metal. It has some pretty nice knurling on it. So if things are wet, obviously if you're going to be applying this to somebody, there's probably going to be a lot of blood around. And so that can be kind of slippery, right? So I do like the fact that it's metal it's nice and strong and it does have that knurling on the barrel on both sides it is hollowed out in the middle to try and keep the weight down because you don't want to be adding too much weight to your kit right but uh, it's hollowed out in the middle and it feels like it's pretty strong this one right here is significantly thicker uh, than the windlass on the recon so the cat 7 is going to be a lot thicker but this one is made out of plastic however regardless if it's made out of plastic or not this thing is super strong and again like i said you know it's proven to be durable obviously when it comes to tourniquets you know if they've seen their life's work like this one has it's been around on my belt for a long period of time uh, it's time to rotate them out because all the materials will degrade over time so keep that in mind but this polymer that they use right here is extremely strong and i don't think that you're going to have any type of problem with it. Uh, the uh, Gen 7s do have this ribbing around the ends of the windlass right here. So you'll be able to grab onto that and, uh, you know, get a good turn and a good twist out of it. Now, both of these tourniquets are going to have the plastic clips that have the Velcro cover on them for locking your windlass in. Uh, once you apply this and you start turning on this windlass, once you get to the proper tightness, you go ahead and you lock it inside this little Velcro piece right here, and that's going to hold everything down together. So it's the same on both of those. Then you take this little tab right here, you bring it over the top and it locks on to the rest of the Velcro. And that is how you will timestamp these essentially. Uh, if you have a tourniquet that looks like a cat tourniquet and it has a sticker on here where you would write the time instead of something that's actually printed, then that is going to be a counterfeit cat. Okay, that's not going to be an actual cat. It has to be printed. That's one of the ways that you can tell the difference. I did see on eBay some pretty cheap ones around that, I don't know, $10 price range and they had the stickers on them, and so they weren't actual cat tourniquets, even though they were pretending that they were actual cat tourniquets. So uh, look out for those stickers. You know, definitely don't want to see a sticker. And at the same time, when you stage these and you're carrying them around with you, don't keep this time thing all the way over because that's gonna put more time between you and actually applying this. So you want to take this little time thing right here and you want to just simply lock it down like that. That gives you quicker access to the windlass. When you open this thing up, you deploy it, you put it on. You don't have to worry about fumbling with this little piece right here. Somebody like me who's a civilian who doesn't have a bunch of medical experience, just, you know, standard medical training, uh, I'm probably going to be fumbling a lot. And there, if I can make something that's a little bit uh, less, less fumbleable, then that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, another thing I want to point out, though, as we look at those clips is that the North American Rescue, and I know it's kind of difficult to see here, the clips are very evenly spaced and uh, they look like they're made really nicely. When we take a look at the recon, you can see that their clips, uh, they're not even even. Uh, they're wrapped and they work just fine, but they're not really even. It doesn't seem like it's uh, the best clip, to be honest with you. With that being said, let's go ahead and flip these things over and look at another feature. And I'm going to flip these to a different side so keep that in mind now this is going to be our recon this is going to be the cat tourniquet right here so they both have that red tip that you're going to find uh, this red tip is a great way of identifying a tourniquet if you have it in a pocket or something else you can have this little red tip sticking out and for anybody that is trained you'll be able to see that red tip and know that there's a tourniquet available right there so they both have the red tip which is nice uh, the recon has this little hole right here if you guys can see this little hole and this hole is meant to assist you in applying the tourniquet so uh, basically what you would do is on a, let's just say the standard cat tourniquet, you peel back, right? And you can go ahead, you can tighten this thing down just by pulling on it. And uh, that's that, right? This one right here has that little hole to assist you if things are wet or slippery. You can go ahead and you can put a finger in there and you can get an extra you know, amount of grab or pull on it. So that's kind of a nice feature to be honest with you. You don't have to worry about this 
part being super strong as the rest of it because this is probably not going to be the part that's going to be cinched down. Okay, if you were to open this thing all the way, it would fit like an elephant's leg, and that'd be pretty much the only way that you would actually use this with any tension. So losing that amount of material right here at this point of the tourniquet isn't really going to matter, but I, I do like that feature. Um, as far as the stitching goes on these, you can see that the Recon tourniquet has a different colored stitching on it, and from what I hear, that stitching is uh, actually a Kevlar stitching. I don't know if that's true or not, but I read somewhere that this is a Kevlar stitching. I don't know that that really matters given the fact, again, that this one right here has been used uh, by the Army since 2005, and I don't see any reports anywhere, and I've looked on both of these, of the stitching actually giving people problems. Obviously, things are going to degrade over time. You know, if you have these on your belt a lot and, you know, they're out in the elements a lot, they're going to end up wearing out because material just wears out in the high UV of the sun, and that's why I have this old tourniquet right here that I've since retired for the newer version. So things will just, you know, eventually the material is just not going to be uh, the same as it was in the very beginning, and you want to switch them out. Now, uh, that is nice if it's Kevlar stitching, uh, but again, I don't have too many reports showing that that really matters all that much. One thing I do want to point out, and if it sounds like I'm being biased, I am kind of being biased. I am somebody who believes in something that's tried and true and tested. So I am a little bit biased here. Nonetheless, I'm trying as my best not to be. But uh, this recon right here versus the actual cat tourniquet, you can see that, and then these are both staged exactly the same. I have these both wrapped and both staged exactly the same. But you can see that the recon's material is much looser. Uh, it also seems much lighter, much thinner. It, uh, it does not feel, I don't know if it is, we're gonna test it out here in just a minute, but it does not feel as strong as the cat material. Uh, the cat material has a lot less kind of binding going on right here, so you know there's, there's not as much wrinkling going on with the uh, extra material as you can see right here. Uh, this one right here, the material just doesn't feel as nice to me, and that kind of goes the same with the material that's located uh, under the windlass as well. Uh, the cat material just seems uh, like it's a, a lot nicer and maybe a heavier thread than the one that's used on the Recon. And obviously, since they're $16, you know, they're gonna save money, you know, somewhere. Uh, the buckles pretty much seem the same to me. I don't really see much different in the buckles. I have seen people here uh, on YouTube that have talked about the buckles on the Recon being, uh, you know, some type of aluminum reinforced buckle. But I went ahead and I checked this one out and uh, it doesn't seem to be reinforced. I mean, maybe I have a counterfeit recon. Uh, if people are doing that, maybe that's you know a thing, or maybe this is a Gen 3, because I believe the Gen 4s are the ones that had that aluminum reinforcement. Regardless, uh, the buckles on these two that we're looking at right here seem to be pretty much the same. So, uh, you know, that's the general basics of these two tourniquets. So what we're gonna do now, uh, I wanna kind of test out how strong this is. I don't want to like overdo it and go absolutely ridiculous on it because that's just not practical, but I do want to try this and tighten it down on something and see uh, if it holds up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, roll of shop towels here, which is actually a pretty firm roll of shop towels. It's, it's pretty firm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to insert it inside the roll in order to kind of simulate bone that would give you a little bit of resistance on the interior. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slide this into the middle of these shop towels. We're going to tighten this thing down and see how many, uh, you know, how many turns we get out of it and how hard we can crank it down before, you know, maybe something fails. If it doesn't fail, great. Okay, so here is our tourniquet applied to our roll of shop towels. And I gotta say, I know that this is completely non-realistic and it's non-scientific. I am not trying to see if this is going to stop a bleed right now. That's not what I'm trying to do. I get that, guys. What I'm trying to do here is simply test the strength of the material that's attached to the windlass itself because this is a metal piece. I don't fear that breaking whatsoever. So I have the tourniquet applied. We have the steel rod inside to give us a little bit more resistance. And I believe that this setup will allow me to turn this tight enough where I would think if it's going to break, this is the point where it's gonna break. So this is uh, not a scientific test. We're just testing the strength of the windlass. That's it. So with that applied, let's go ahead and start turning this thing. So with the material, you can see I already get like a turn and a half out of it before any pressure is actually applied. Uh, as we continue to turn it, uh, it's getting pretty tight already, which is good. So I think maybe another half turn would probably be all that we would need should somebody actually be bleeding. Well, we're still turning. That's getting pretty, pretty freaking hard to turn, I can tell you that much. We're several turns in now, and it still hasn't broken. Let's see if I can get it around another half a turn here. 
I can I have it turned so tight I can't even barely get it underneath that plastic anymore and this is kind of one of the things I was talking about with that plastic uh, if the plastic's not symmetrical that could give you an issue but uh, yeah that is that is really really tight so as we look at it right now and where the material is so this is where the material gets dragged in by the windlass okay so there's this free floating material underneath this strap right here the windlass pulls that in as you're turning and that is what ap applies our compression right so you can see that we have it on there right now it looks like everything you know is, is nice and strong it doesn't feel like anything's going anywhere you know i mean it looks like there's even pressure applied so our clip right here is pretty much matched up with the base that holds everything together uh, looks like we have a little bit of pressure right here on this clip and i do see you know some bending right there maybe a little bit of that plastic starting to curve and maybe even turn white just a little bit but uh yeah so giving as, as pretty much as tight of pressure as I could get it without even being able to spin it anymore, uh, it didn't break. So, you know, you gotta give it credit for that. Now, in my non-medical opinion, I am not a doctor, I'm not an EMT, I am not somebody who's that highly trained. You know, again, I've just been through some classes that will help me understand how to, you know, stop bleeding and stuff, but uh, not somebody who's ever actually had to use something in the field, I think that would have stopped the bleed. I think that that would have been able to cramp down hard enough to where it's going to stop the arteries from allowing blood to flow through. And so again, I do think that that would have worked. Nothing broke on it. Uh, it seems to have held up just fine. Uh, the material still looks good. I don't see any seams or stitches breaking as far as the plastic goes, because you got to consider that in real life, these are, these are one use things. Okay. You don't want to use these, tighten them down, crank them, have them on somebody for a while and then take them off and reuse them again. I mean, if you ever really have to use these things, they, they're really considered one use items, right? Um, as far as everything else goes, it looks like we are pretty much okay. Got a little bit of uh, bending on this little plastic clip right here, but it doesn't seem like that is, you know, a big issue. So that seems to be okay. You know, I don't see really a, a, a big deal with it. It seemed like it tightened it down in a few enough turns where it would be efficient and fast enough to actually work. So that was good too. Um, so yeah, I don't really have anything negative to say except for the fact that this is not something that has that same lineage that you're going to find out of our cat tourniquet so if this is all you can afford i would say it seems to be fine um you know it's really hard for me to endorse anything that's you know not the actual piece but it seems like it works so maybe this uh you know and again it's a sample size of one too i wish i had you know a dozen to try out to see if they all work the same but uh, again this is a sample size of one and it seemed to work uh this right here our cat tourniquet we know it's going to work so it's it's got to be up to you for me when it comes to something that could save my life or my kid's life or my wife's life or a friend or just maybe you know you come across an accident on the freeway and somebody needs help absolutely immediately and things like that uh, I, I mean, is 30 bucks really too much to spend? I don't think so. I personally would go with the cat tourniquet, even though this thing works, I would still go with the cat tourniquet, tourniquet just for the simple fact that I am 100%, uh, I 100% I, I know this is gonna work, okay? Uh, and I don't have that same confidence with this. And I think that $30 is not a lot of money when it comes to saving a life. Uh, if you're gonna spend $500 on a defensive tool to defend your life, 30 bucks is, you know, a box of ammo, one box of ammo, and you'll, you'll be able to have something like this. So just keep those things in mind, but I wanted to show you the two and I wanted to show them to you side by side and, you know, try and be as non-biased as possible and give credit where credit is due and, uh, you know, show you guys a different product that's available. For me, I use two. I use the cat tourniquet and then when space is very limited or I need to put something around my belt or something like that, then I use a rat tourniquet. Those are the two that I use. That's pretty much it. That doesn't mean that those are the only two that you can use, but those are the two that I feel the most comfortable using is the cat and the rat. That's pretty much it. So anyway, uh, this is a closer look at the Recon Medical Cat Style Tourniquet and an actual cat tourniquet from North American Rescue. Remember, links to everything will be down below. Uh, or you can go ahead and check out my website as well. Uh, my website has a lot of great discount codes and other information. So I want to thank you guys all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.